am taking google as you know as the epitome of security for for now so now even the resource server would not trust even if the access token has come now do you remember when was the last time you actually signed up for a website or a product by actually setting up your user id and password well i don't think so because nowadays we often go to authorization providers like google facebook twitter and all this is done by the power of oauth So in this video we'll understand what is OAuth, how exactly it works, especially with a real life example, and then we'll go into the actual workflow. I am pretty sure by the end of this video you will have a better understanding of what is OAuth, and I hope you would be able to explain it to someone else. So without further ado, let's get started. So what is OAuth? Well, in a very simple terms, OAuth is providing someone access without password. It is an open standard for authorization which allows any third party application to go to an authorization provider on your behalf and get your data from there. But to even simplify it further, let's take a real life example. Suppose you and your friend lives in the same house and then one day when while you are in your company to attend an important meeting, you realize that you have actually left your access card on on the table. Now you can't go there so quickly so you ask one of your colleague who stays nearby to go and visit your friend and ask him uh, for the access card now this colleague does not know uh, your friend neither your friend knows this colleague so what he does he gives a secret passcode to the colleague he says that okay just go there and give my date of birth for example okay and code this to my friend and he'll understand that you know me very well and then he will hand over the access card to you now this colleague goes to this friend and in the meantime this friend also sent the same passcode on the whatsapp of this particular friend okay so when this colleague goes to his friend to ask for the access card then he asks for this access code and this you know sorry i missed a one so this access code is then shown to this the friend and then friend understands that okay yes he is the guy who need, who needs to come and and then to further confirm it your friend calls you and confirms that the guy has come in and i am handing over it is it okay and then reconfirms the passcode and then once everything is confirmed eventually your friend trusts your colleague and hand over this particular access card to your colleague and then your colleague comes to the office and gives it back to you now don't exactly match it with oauth <laughs> i'm just trying to give you a real life example so friends let's understand and dissect what exactly is happening in this scenario in this scenario you are letting your colleague access your data on your behalf and then you are letting your friend know about it so that this particular colleague could be authorized to do so now there are certain elements of oauth which we'll understand and then we'll use this in the actual workflow uh, in in the next section so you are the user in this particular scenario your friend is the resource server because this is the you know this is the party who would be actually handing over the actual you know resource your colleague is the third party application uh, which is trying to access or get the data access card uh, is your actual user's data which is which is there in this particular resource server and the passcode which you gave 54321 is the authorization code or authorization token which has to be presented in order to confirm this particular colleague's identity so these are certain elements which comes into picture there are more elements which comes in the actual workflow which uh, you know which might have been skipped uh, covering this uh, real life example but i i hope you get the flow now okay so now let's go to the actual workflow of oauth and understand how exactly it works by keeping this real life example as a context okay so friends let's understand this uh, actual oauth workflow now some components i have introduced here is additional to our real life example but then the implementation varies from scenario to scenario okay so in this example this user is trying to access this social media app and this social media app wants access to this user's google photos right so it posts a message that should be be able to link your google photos into this application so that i can 
एज एन एप्लीकेशन इम्पोर्ट ऑल द फोटोज फ्रॉम गूगल फोटोज एट द फर्स्ट प्लेस यूजर सेज येस द मोमेंट यूजर एक्सेप्ट एंड अप्रूव दिस एट द सेकेंड प्लेस दिस पर्टिकुलर एप्लीकेशन गोज टू द गूगल ऑथोराइजेशन सर्वर नाउ इफ यू सी वी डेंट टॉक अबाउट ऑथोराइजेशन सर्वर इन आर रियल लाइफ एग्जाम्पल because at at you know at some places the authorization server and the resource server are the same but in more secured environments your authorization server will mostly be a different server with or which will actually give you the authorization token and access token and your resource server will then give you the uh, you know actual resource so in this case google authorization server takes this particular request and then the authorization server will give send a page to this particular user in would ask this particular xyz app is asking for your photos access are you approving it what do you, what what you want to do with it so in number 3 this page is given to you know this particular page is sent and then the user is asked for uh, his or her permission for this whole uh, access to the photos so at step 5 user says again says yes approve it and then maybe it could also ask the login id and the password to actually authenticate the user as well i have not kept it to simplify things so the moment user approves this this request goes back to the authorization server and at number 6 this step is very important because i have again brought up the social media app in this workflow here so the moment this whole workflow up till step 5 is completed at number 6 an authorization token or authorization code is sent to this social media application because now the user has approved it the moment authorization code is given this particular application goes back to this authorization server to come and get an access token there is a difference between authorization code and access code token authorization code uh, authorizes you as a valid application but then until and unless you don't have an access token you won't be able to actually access the real resource so at step 7 this particular authorization code is again social media app sends back to this token endpoint and this token endpoint will then give at step 8 the actual access token now this is the actual key to the locker this is where this media social media application is now authorized and have the access token to finally go to the actual resource server which is holding the user's photo at step 9 and then it will provide this particular access code, uh, token and say hey i have got this token can you give me the photos but as i say this whole scenario could be customized based on the security level and i am taking google as you know as the epitome of security for for now so now even the resource server would not trust even if the access token has come now the resource server will again go to this uh, google authorization server google resource server will go to google authorization server and this workflow is called as introspection wherein the resource server will ask that whether this access token which this uh, media app is providing is valid or not so at 10 it will take this access token again to the authorization server and in step 11 the authorization server says hey don't worry you know i have i have myself given this access token so this application uh, could be trusted so at step 12 finally after doing this workflow and after confirming the identity and the trust of this particular media uh, app at step 12 finally the, these photos are sent and uh, as a resource to this particular social media application so now this might look like a very lengthy workflow but it happens in a split of um, seconds or minutes okay this whole oauth protocol has been designed in a way where it is open standard so anyone you know could use this oauth api and produce this whole workflow so i hope you now got this flow and how oauth works and this is why oauth is so special guys because oauth democratizes your whole authorization system you don't have to build your own you could simply authenticate authorize a user and get access to his or her resources using oauth protocol because it's an open standard that means be it google be it amazon be it azure anywhere you know any application if you are building your own uh, application you can simply use oauth to get these resources or get authorization and that's why nowadays we as i said in the start of the video no one nowadays set up their own user id password on any of the apps and that's the magic of oauth so friends i hope you now know a bit about oauth and how exactly it works just to reiterate we have several components in oauth starting from the user himself 
the third party application the authorization server the authorization server then comes the authorization code the access token actual resource server which actually holds the resource this whole mechanism to build the trust and uh, approve or disapprove this request and eventually that golden egg which is called as your own resource which is then given to this particular third party app so friends this brings us to the end of this video i hope you now know a bit more about oauth and if you did please don't forget to hit the like button hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to exactly know when i upload my next video and until next time guys keep learning keep sharing all your knowledge and yes keep hustling bye for now